You may be thinking this is a trick of a light, but it's actually not. The new growth on this pepper plant, Jalapeno specifically, is coming in much lighter green, especially for those of you that are gardening in a cold climate where unfortunately the season is almost coming to an end. If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist where I take that science and I apply it to all things plants, both indoors and outside. And today's video, we're going to be looking at identifying nutrient deficiencies. Now, one thing I will say is that this method can be used across the board, whether it be with a house plant, a tomato, a pepper, kale plant, you name it, it's all going to yield the exact same results. So let's take a look at this pot. And first off, to actually do the diagnosis on this, there's a few things we want to do. First, we want to look and identify what the issue is. One thing I will say is my peppers that are existing are not showing any burr or blossom end rot, meaning that calcium and magnesium is not the issue, which typically can cause some of this yellowing. Now, the next thing I wanna consider is how soft is this green, lime green, and is the lime green also transitioning into the veins? It is slightly, however, when I go to give this a bit of a feel, it doesn't feel soft and tender. And in fact, when I bend the leaves, if I was to really fold them, they could crack. Now the next question becomes, when I feel the leaves, are they crisp, meaning very difficult to bend? And is there any deformities on them? And the answer to that again is no. If there was some form of a deformity or curling either up or down or a very firm leaf, this could be a sign of a calcium deficiency again, especially if we don't have the fruits, which can help us identify. Now, the truth is that I have dark green veins for the most part on just the new growth combined with lime green new growth. And I'm thinking leaning towards a sulfur or an iron deficiency issue. Now, because we're in a colder climate, fertilizer in this case is not going to be my saving grace. In a lot of cases, things like iron deficiencies or sulfur deficiencies are caused by changes in the pH, meaning that the pH is likely too high. Anything above a 6.5 and iron drastically begins to drop off in its bioavailability. So the solution could be to repot the entire container and ultimately put a new potting soil mix in that has some lime that is neutralized or in this case if i was to reuse this potting soil i would have to add some form of elemental sulfur however i'm in short growing season the stress from that alone could cause the jalapenos i do have to drop combined with the flowers to drop and ultimately send the plant into absolute shock which will reduce any growth or hopes of growth i have for the remainder of the year now the best way to treat an issue like this is actually going to be a foliar application of nutrients so i've gone over this in videos before i talked about it in my 17 essential plant nutrient playlist and one thing i will say is sulfur and iron is very easily absorbed through the plant leaves meaning i don't have to rely on the ph and i don't necessarily have to get the soil working for me i can apply that all through the leaves now there's a fancy little mechanism on the bottom side on all plant leaves called your stomata and they have guard cells that open and close or expose them to the air. So the best time to actually foliar apply is a right now as the sun is going down into the evening because that is when respiration is most active now respiration happens all day but if it's really intense heat it is very unlikely to happen or happen in very low rates if it's a mild cool day it's more likely to happen but evening is the best time for this application so i'm going to be using two different products um, the first one is going to be a copper grow now this isn't a copper deficiency by any means however any plant in the garden will benefit from some copper grow and because this plant is under some stress i want to give it essentially the equivalent of vitamin c for plants through that copper now if i had on hand i could turn this bus around within three to four days with a true iron sulfur foliar spray which does exist it's on amazon and i'm going to buy it because i'm suspecting this may happen with some of my other ones considering i do have and i do reuse all my potting soil so something went a little awry when i remixed everything meaning i could see this pop up in other plants in the future so i'm going to order that and i'll leave a link for the one that i'm going to use down below 
The other method I'm going to use in this case is actually a foliar and a watering method using tea. So I'm going to be using the classic compost tea and this is by Jocelyn Soil Booster. It's actually a program ran out of Toronto in the GTA where they take food waste and they make products out of it such as worm castings and tea in this case. So I'm going to be using that kit on this plant again as a foliar application. Now keep in mind when any ever using any sort of foliar spray you want to use actual foliar spray stuff that is specifically designed and said to be used in this regard. The reason for this is because products that aren't engineered for foliar application will not be absorbed into leaves. The leaves need some form of a carrier, usually in the form of a surfactant, to break the barrier and to be uptaken. The other thing to keep in mind is a larger size molecules are not moved across that stomata. They are only moved through the roots. So things like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in a lot of cases are not taken up by the leaves. They can be taken up in minor amounts. With that being said, I'm gonna be able to hopefully, fingers crossed, turn this boat around within three to four days. That's how quickly foliar applications work. And my goal is to keep him flowering and happy. I may notice some loss in flowers only because of that foliar application, but I'm going to apply it for the next two or so weeks and see what the results are. Whenever you are doing any form of diagnosis and trying to figure out what's going in, on in your garden, there is some value in not just applying or throwing the kitchen sink at it and actually using each individual format to fix the actual problem because then you are able to reference and look back and write in your journal as to whether or not it's working. So, and it'll help you prepare better for next year. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below if you've ever seen light green growth, such as what I'm seeing here. Got me super excited because I was like, oh my gosh, something's going around with my plants. I can make a video about it. Maybe that's just a me thing, I'm not sure. Anyways, and be sure to check out both the foliar application for the iron sulfate. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to actually get you the link to the copper I'm using because that's from a very local shop here in Saskatoon. I believe it's called the Herb Man. Um, anyways, it's a cannabis shop, but they have some really nice products there. It's local owned, like Saskatoon, very specific to where I am. So anyone in Saskatoon, go check them out. And then I will leave the Soil Booster code down below as well, along with an actual discount code that's good till the end of 2022. So you can grab some of the tea along with some of their other products if you want to support that. Um, I mean, it's 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 you can buy in the u.s but it's locally made in the gta like over in ontario and it's just a food waste management system in place it's really cool i'm gonna do a whole video just on that company because i just love stuff like that i'm like it gets me really excited if i could set something up like that in saskatoon man that'd be awesome but anyways i will talk to you guys next time bye